Go ahead. <laughs> high low. Was that actually high low? Yep. All right, guys. Uh, we are live with the seventh episode of Much Ado About Dota. Obviously, uh, we always have a guest, and with us today is uh, none other than No Tide Hunters carry player, Swedish legend. It's uh, part of the boy band, apparently. That was CLG slash, and then wow. was morphed into Zenith. Uh, Loda, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, thanks for having me. I guess. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, with us today also, obviously, is uh, the rest of our hosts, uh, none other than Paint Dota, formerly of Quantic, the organization that folded. Hi, Josh. Yeah, hey, hey, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, rounding out our crew, obviously, is uh, AY2000 of Dignitas fame. Hi, Kurt. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and uh, in the dark, you can't really see because he kind of blends in, but... In his giant ass chair, we have uh, Liquid Bulba. Hello. What's up, Sam? All right, uh, so the first thing I actually wanted to talk about, Lodo, was actually directed to you. Um, you guys okay. played in... You guys obviously won DreamHack, right? And then okay. a week later, you guys kind of played... Uh, you guys played the Thor tournament in Sweden as well, right? And yeah. you did get second, which isn't a bad result at all, getting first and second in two major tournaments consecutively. Uh, How do you feel about... The tournament in general. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I felt it was okay, but I mean, it was two different tournaments. I mean, for Dreamhack, we practiced a ton, and for Thor, we kind of didn't have the urge to practice as much. We had other stuff going on at the moment, and um, I knew that Fnatic had been practicing a lot, and they've been playing better and better, and like they've become a much better team. And we were like quite uh, unprepared strat-wise. We we're, were quite predictable and, I don't know, a, a little bit of everything. But I mean, we're not really demoralized or anything. We just know that we didn't really have the practice needed. Maybe we okay. didn't take it serious enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, also that some people say that you guys are like a product of a playstyle. Do you feel like that's unfair? Like, a lot of people say it was kind of like the whole stacking thing, and now that that's been changed, do you guys feel like you're able to play outside of that? Uh, I don't think we're so worried about that. I mean, we, uh, we've we been, like, trying a lot of different things in scrims right now. It's it's not really a play style we want to play. It's more like we kind of end up having that lineup or play style when we, we are done with picks. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Uh, but I mean, we're we're trying to get more versatile and not as predictable. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's about being. Um, I mean, I think we can play a, a fuckload of different playstyles. I know we can. Like we we switch around captains and pick different lineups when we scrim all kinds of teams, and we we do win uh, the majority of them at least. But it's just that. When when you go down to a tournament like that without enough practice and enough uh, confidence in your lineups, um, it's it's easy just to get outpicked by a team that has been practicing a lot. And picks do matter a lot. So. Okay, fair enough. I I thought you guys are also a team that'll be here to stay, but I know Bulba had some issue with at DreamHack with the whole style setup. Sam, right? <laughs> well, you were expecting well. Navi to just like win it all. Yeah, but now like Navi's losing everyone, so it's kind of ironic. No, but I think there's a lot of good teams out there. I mean, uh, yeah, obviously people just because also. just because we won Dreamhack doesn't mean we're extremely much better than every, everyone else. It just means that we we took it serious enough and we practiced a lot. And I think that all the teams are quite even, and it it shows right away if a team stops practicing even for a while, like they will start losing games and that's why it seems like VP and Empire are like extremely strong at the moment. Yeah, that They're actually uh, yeah. there was the uh, Aces tournament, right, that just kind of happened recently between uh, Empire and VP and a lot of people expected um, Navi to do well, right? Kurt, you mentioned that you watched the ending ceremonies and only one Navi player went up there to accept, right? Yeah, Navi was really upset after that tournament so maybe we can hopefully see them practicing to get back in shape and stuff. Yeah, I know that the Starladder tournament is like the same week, I think. 
Is it? Isn't it? I, I think it's this week. Uh, it's next this week. This already nice. happened. Hey, it's very Starliner short. tournament is next week, I think. I might be so mistaken. Like three days. It's next yeah. two days. <laughs> mhm. Mm so we'll have to see like how Navi uh, like changes after losing at the Aces tournament, because like as you mentioned, only one person went up at the live ceremony. So I don't know if there's like some team conflict there. Like we've there were rumors around like uh, a bit of team conflict at TI2 and stuff, and maybe changing members out and stuff. Uh, maybe it rose again. I don't know. But we'll have to see at Star Ladder, and we have another tournament so soon, which is going to be nice to see. Yep. Sam, being like the, you are actually like the person that pushed for Navi the most. Do you think they have it in them to come back? Do you think it's just a practice issue, or has everyone just kind of caught up by now? Mm, I guess we have to wait and see. But I don't think everyone. I think everyone just gotten better compared. Like compare the scene how it is now compared to how it is last year. At least the Western scene, like you have, you have all these like strong teams. They're actually practicing. Like you, you go to the scrim group and you see like all these high skill teams looking. And last year at this time there was like barely everyone, anyone looking at all. So the scene's growing and everyone's getting better. And at least it's showing that Dota's is not about individual skill anymore. It's about mostly teamwork and strategies and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So I did want to talk about the games like briefly though, as Josh tries to fix his webcam. Uh, the finals were, of course, uh, Empire versus Virtus Pro, which is a pretty good series. Uh, I actually saw something that was kind of interesting. Uh, everyone seems to be picking pretty much like anything to try to see if it works. Like I think VP picked Weaver one game, right? And like Nyx was banned as well. So, did you guys have any thoughts about like those new heroes coming in, or like do you feel that some heroes are just like flat out better than others? Like uh, Sven and Magnus over picking heroes like Nyx and Weaver. Sam? Um, I, I, I just think it, it just depends on their own play style. I know that Virtus Pro, they picked uh, Nakes and Weaver a lot, and it's like what their carry player prefers playing. So it's just based on what each team likes. Like some teams like this hero better than other teams. Like Fnatic RC loves Chaos Knight, and uh, I, I, you can just go on. EG loves Sven, like these kind of just heroes that are central to the team, and it's what their players prefer playing. So I, I don't think you can really say, like, this hero is stronger than that just because of this tournament. You have to wait and see, but it's it's nice to see all these teams expanding to different kind of uh, different heroes. Yeah. Uh, what, did, what do you think um, kind of led VP to kind of coming back around? They were down in the dirt for a while, right? Like, they hadn't played anything, and then they just kind of came out of nowhere to get um, second, actually, to Empire and placing over oh. uh, Navi. Don't they have like a 24 win streak in their Yeah, I think it was 27 going into Asus. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't really say they're coming from nowhere. This team is reaping and has been reaping for a long time. And I've been, even when we went to DreamHack, we rated this team quite high. Like, we thought that if they would go to DreamHack, they would be a contender. And, uh, I don't know, I think they've been practicing a lot together and it seems to work out. I didn't think they would be as strong as they are, but as you guys said, uh, Dota now is about team play. Like, seriously, there's a lot of, like, everyone is really good. All the players are quite even when it comes to skill-wise. Then it's about team play and strategies. Yeah, I meant to ask you, by the way, um, on the subject of picks and stuff, do you feel like you have a lot more say in this team than you did in Zenith. I know watching the international, you were kind of just like by yourself while everyone was like huddled around the screen. Like is this, when you guys go into the picking phase, do you ever like have an overall plan or do you go in there and you kind of switch based on what they pick and what you want to play? Um, yeah, of course I have more, more of a say here. I mean, if I actually want something to happen when it comes to, comes to the picks, um, it will happen. I mean, when we went, I think it was the first game against Fnatic. I I called for the. I called for to ban like CK and Enigma or something when we had first pick, just because I know they love these heroes. And then I knew that they would go back to picking, uh, Shen and play this safe kind of style with strong lanes and push. But I mean, then we just executed the strategy against them horribly instead. I mean, that first game was like, 
I don't know if you remember, but I was playing like Undying. And there was some problem with the lanes. We were going to swap back and forth, back and forth. And then I ended up being solo against a bounty hunter or something. Um, and Scylla ended up being on my try lane. And I didn't really want to stay top. I mean, the lane went fine. Undying versus bounty. But I mean, it's quite useless putting a Undying in a position like that. Then when we wanted to swap, Scylla died. Keep it back bottom. And then like from there on, the game was quite... Quite fucked, but I mean, I, I back to the question. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, I do have a lot, lot to say. I had quite a lot to say in Senate as well, and I think that thing when I sat away from them was more of a joke within the team because we did win the second day of the group stage when I didn't sit and pick with the team. I just said like, I pick a great lineup and I will play and we will rape. That's pretty much it. And then we went back to that. So that's the truth behind it. Okay. Yeah, I was really curious behind that in general, but it, it just seemed like a little more awkward than it was. But probably people just yeah, it, overplaying it. It, 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 it. I think. Was it okay with you playing with him without pants on? Was that something everyone just went in with? Like, all right, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, I was fine with with it. Sure. I mean, playing with ice is a adventure in itself. So, pants is the least of it. <laughs> All right. So moving on, um, uh, the ruler actually just posted from DotaBuff.com some interesting ah, statistics where Dota 2 just reached a million accounts that have played at least one game of Dota. Did everyone see that? That's yeah, I read it. There's yeah, 78 million games played, but uh, the thing I wanted to note was that less than 20% of the player pool comes from North America. Uh, Josh, what do you think? is kind of lacking for Americans in general and why it hasn't quite hit us as hard? Uh, well, first off, uh, League of Legends has a really... It was 3 million player accounts. Yeah, that's... Sorry, I like Zoned. Not 1 million. But yeah, yeah um, first off, like League of Legends is incredibly big in North America. Uh, like, you go to... I went to a couple college campuses recently and I stayed with friends and stuff and, like, I saw people, like, landing... League of Legends and just playing a lot and then like they have a lot of friends that play and it just creates like a big group uh, so League is pretty big in North America and a, a lot of these college students have like these uh, cheap laptops uh, that can't really run anything but League and League and League is like a such a low requirement game and uh, it's just a nice team game so it's partly because of League of Legends I'd say and then uh, Dota 2 is like it, it's pretty it's a heavy time investment, and it's just the culture in North America that doesn't really accept gaming as much as Europe and Asia in general. Like, Sweden accepts gaming so well, and Russia especially accepts, like, gaming, uh, especially Dota 2. And Dota, they've supported Dota for years. They've had the Aces since, like, 2006. And, uh, yeah, they just have a really supportive community over there for Dota 2. They have the Aces tournaments that we're running that fostered so many talented Ru Russian players you see today. Like, we have pictures from Dendi when he was, like, 13 years old uh, playing in those tournaments. I think Loda went to a couple of them, too, from my memory. I did, I did. And uh, Sweden has, like, the base of... They have DreamHack uh, playing. <laughs> they have DreamHack LAN event, and then they have, like, tournaments like Thor Open. It just supports the local community so much more. We need something like an MLG tournament. We need the NASL. We need something local for North America. We need tournaments in North America to see that like people can play these games competitively, have fun, and like make some money at it even. And uh, yeah, it's just a big time investment, uh, and it's pretty hard to get into. It and it's shunned upon right now, and there isn't much going on. Kurt, do you have anything to expand upon of? Uh North America being kind of low in terms of the player pool? Um, I think Josh pretty much covered it. Like, League of Legends is, in pop is like incredibly popular. And, well, it's worth keeping in mind that it is still a beta. I don't know how relevant that is with how many keys Valve is giving out. But I do still know people who don't have keys. Just because they don't want to put the effort in to look for a key. And something like League of Legends just has a click here to download and play thing, you know? And League is so casual as well. Like, you can just hop onto League and, like, play a game. And you can you can do all right. Like, you can do pretty well in the yeah. game. Like, you can own. 
Like, I don't. I don't think you can just hop on and on. Yeah, no, I, like, my... I mean, it's 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 quite different though. Like in League, you can hop in and you can do okay and stand by the tower and like be safe. In Dota 2, if you play it the first time, you get you get you can get so fucking demolished that you yeah. don't like even understand anything and you're gonna hate the game so much. You're like what? Like exactly. I was level one, he dived me a tower. They kill us 15 times before 10 minutes. Like, what is this game? Is it broken? It's. <laughs> yeah. I know so many people that hate their lives after they try Dota 2 the first time. So, Leech is That's totally Leech it. is a better option the first time. Um, like, ob obviously. I I hate to say it, but I I went over to like I had four friends that were like it was a Sunday afternoon and I was staying at their place and they just fucking brought all their laptops over and they started playing League and then they brought me a laptop and they're like hop in. And I'm like, oh, I'll pass. So I passed for the first game, but then I ended up playing like a couple of league games that day. And they're just like so casual. But they're so into it at the same time. Like they're really passionate about it. Like they really like to play yeah, the game. It's quite weird, right? That's what I think mm -hmm. is weird about the league community because there's a fuckload of really passionate bad players. Yeah. They are so passionate about the game. And I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah. But I've actually been playing it secretly, league, a bit. <laughs> So I am quite good. So I can show off, you know, to people if they show me, like, oh, you played Dota, are you okay at League? And I'm like, ah, I haven't played it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my first time. Yeah. Yeah. 30, you know? <laughs> ah, I hate the game, but okay, I can show, you know, you <laughs> see. <laughs> Win the discussion. In, uh, in Sweden, is Dota still kind of reign supreme, or has LOL kind of just taken over? I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's it's quite even, I guess, actually, in Sweden. Uh, hard to say, but I mean, there's a lot more casual gamers that are in the league. Uh, usually I would say it's like, it's more common that a league player, a player starts, let's say a casual gamer starts with a mobile genre, they will start with league, and then if they become more and more hardcore gamers, they will go into Dota 2 uh, in Sweden, as it is now. I mean, if they don't really, really love league, but I mean, usually you start with league. Either way, and I don't really think that uh, that like one game being extremely big is really bad for the other game. I think it helps both both games grow. And if you have watched a lot of League of Legends, you can understand Dota 2 much easier. And that's a fact, like because League is a bit easier than uh, Dota. So then you can start that way. And then when you watch some Dota 2 games instead, you are like, oh, I kind of understand this, and you, it's it helps the uh, both games grow. I think. Yeah, and League, you can, like, play one game and then, like, just, I don't know, it's just, there's not much skill to it. So you can, like, play a game and then you don't have to, like, retain skill level or anything as well. Like, you're going to be playing, like, the same level opponent, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You won't face these, like, extreme good players, so you have some space to own. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I've tried League and it was pretty good, though. I Like, I enjoyed what it had to offer. It, it was like a completely different kind of Dota that was kind of interesting, I guess. But that's the thing. I think it's okay. The no real hate against the game. I think the game is fine, and it's cool to try different heroes. But other than that, I like Dota two more. But that's just a that's just my taste. Yeah. yeah. Sam, have you ever played LOL? Actually, I know you've played LOL, right? What? No. Okay, then I'll move on and not bug you. So six oh, wait, points. Wait, wait, wait. What's okay. up? Wait, so the question say? was like, compare LOL to Dota, was that the question? No, 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 don't worry about it. It was saying why We're Dota just, wasn't big. Yeah, and, why Dota wasn't big. Know, in North America, okay. and yeah, just kind of went off on a tangent. Yeah, I meant to ask you about that, Sam. You, you're on Team Liquid. Is Are you guys like really hoping for, uh, obviously you are hoping for North American tournaments, right? Being a North American uh, organization, right? I think Team Liquid is based out of New York. So yeah, have you guys like... Do you know if like I, any of the Liquid guys are talking with anybody about? Well, I, actually, I actually talk with them a lot about like esports in general, and they're always like they want the American audience to be the biggest because everything just routed through the U.S. like ads and it's just everything. I just felt like if a if a if a tour. The thing about Dota is the viewers are primarily in the Europe scene, but most of like the MLG sponsors and stuff like that might want one that is more like North American. So that's kind of why. You obviously want North America to have the higher viewer count, so I hope that increases, and I hope they release the game soon, which obviously will help. But another thing yeah. is, uh, 
comparing to like how you switch to the games, I know that a lot of my friends played League and then they switched into Dota, and then when they switched into Dota, they don't want to go back to League. So maybe yeah, that's, that's what I. Doesn't. Yeah, that's what I tried to say as well. Like that's a common thing for my friends as well. By the way, in Sweden, is it kind of if you were to tell somebody like you're a pro gamer, does anybody like bat an eyelash or is anybody like freaked out by that, or is it like a more accepted thing over there? I mean, I guess it's like. It's more acceptable, but I mean, of course, there's people that would be like surprised or have have a hard time grasping it. But sure, the culture is more open towards it. I yeah, mean, because they do write about it in like newspapers and stuff like that. So. Yep. Okay. So, recently there was a change, obviously, to Dota 6.77, right? Just got released. And we saw a few things be changed. Like people were saying, I think Sam, you said Batrider was in the god tier, and he actually got nerfed where you can't attack while using Flaming Lasso. Do you feel like that's a big enough change to kind of balance out the hero, or do you still feel that he's kind of the first fan, first pick kind of hero? He's he's still balanced, but it it makes him less of an annoying mid solo. Like well, ha oftentimes when you have like five or six charges on the hero, you would just use your ultimate and then you just attack him because your attacks do so much more damage. But now you have to just utilize him as his main DPS, DPS has to be Firefly and the the Napalm. So his attacks don't, aren't going to be as much, but he's still like an insanely retarded hero. He can be in any lane and just be annoying to play versus. Yeah. Do you, um, Kurt, do you guys still, do you as Zignitas, like, is that a priority hero for you guys? And like, does this change anything at all for you? Well, I think pretty much almost all teams will pick Batrider first to like Batrider or Meg, or unless they have a specific strategy. Um, the lasso change is, I mean, it's a nice nerf, but I don't think it's big enough to make him any less in balance, right? He's still really strong. Um, what do you? I think the okay, main well, thing is the the force well, staff. Wait, they changed uh, force staff? Uh, what did yeah, you know? I, I guess. guess. I think that's the main imbalance part about him, where you can blink and force that. Yeah, it does. It does. It does make it quite a, a bit more imbalanced, actually. I, I think the hero is. It's at a hard place, you know. Like if they nerf it uh, a bit too much, the hero will go back to being not picked. Uh, I don't think it will be solved by making Batrider much weaker. Maybe I don't know about that strength buff to, to begin with. Like it was a bit big. If they could make it a bit le bit less, maybe. But the hero is just so tanky and everything right now, so yeah, I agree, it's broken. It's Path and Mag, and then, I don't know, Bounty is third. Do you guys have any, like, reasonable suggestions of how you think you could balance the hero without actually just breaking it one way or another? Like, what oh, do you I... think has to kind of be hit? Oh, I think that needed was, like, just the animation change, and then, like, not the strength change. Uh... Yeah. Or a bit less strength, just... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other hero that I wanted to talk about as well was just going down the line. Bounty Hunter. Track no longer reduces armor. Do you think that'll change absolutely anything about the hero at all? Or do you feel like track, like the whole bounty in it is still too good? Like, I know, Kurt, you guys had to play against uh, Empire, right? And that kind of just screwed you guys over? Sorry, what? Like the whole bounty system with uh, his track gold. Oh yeah, well, like armor. I don't really think that makes that much of a difference. It's like, what is his armor? One three five. I don't even yeah. know what it was. Like it wasn't something super huge. I mean, five armor at sixteen is so. Oh no nice. no no! Track no longer reduces armor. Yeah, but it, it used to be one three five, right? Yeah. No, yeah, I was it that? Sorry. I don't know. I don't know. I think oh, it's okay. something like that. Yeah, like that wasn't why track was so good, really. So. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, isn't isn't it the right way to go? Like, you don't want to make a... you don't want to make bounty weak, but just removing this small thing that just made the spell too broke. Like, it was obviously broken. The the track, in my opinion, like extra movement speed, minus pack, minus armor, you get extra gold, bounty gets extra gold. Like there was just too many things. Like by making it a bit less good, I think. I think I would have rather seen out. like a small nerf on the bounty amount or movement speed. Like just really small. I don't want something huge, but I sort of like the armor part of it because 
I want people to be able to like team fight evenly and not have one team come super on top and the armor sort of makes it a useful spell in that. But like the bounty is just like you trade evenly and you're double the gold ahead or something. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like we 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 know the on our team we 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 really love the imbalance of bounty. I mean, you can play these lineups with bounty where you just you you've lost your lanes and then you just play five. You just, you just yeah, you just fight your way back into the game and you like both teams keep dying everywhere and you just end up winning, getting yeah. the yeah winning getting more gold and then you end up winning the game. So it's I mean I think it's nice because it makes team. You can play a bit different, I guess, but no. It's easy. It if you nerf track too much, the hero can become quite useless again. Yeah. Okay. So the next um, hero that I actually really wanted, really, really wanted to talk about was uh, Magnus. Finally, saw some nerfs. We saw uh, skewer no longer affects magic immune units, meaning that you can't just like BKB and then get shoved away from the rest. Yeah. Of thank the God. Uh, the skewer range got completely rescaled from being 1,200 to going to 6, 8, um, 1,000, and then 12. And then reverse polarity's duration was decreased from, you know, scaling from 2.5 to 4 to now going from 2.25 to 3.75. Uh, Josh, do you think that has any reasonable implications on the hero? Like, do you feel like he's still a top pick, or does that kind of even things out now for the rest of the playing field? Uh... I still feel like he's a pretty darn good pick. Uh, the 600 range on level 1 skewer is pretty big, and uh, even so, you only get level 2 skewer by level 7, so you, it's like 800 range you're going to be dealing with for the early parts of the game. So that's that's a pretty good nerf. Uh, it actually makes him killable before. Like, uh, 600 range, you can catch him with like a stone or something by predicting where he's going to go or cutting off escape routes. But 1200 range was just so far for every hero to like go and catch up, and it was just really unrealistic to be able to kill the mag. Um, the skewer no longer affects magic muni units. Yeah, uh, I think that was o way overboard. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. I think everyone agrees that mag was just extremely yeah. broken. <laughs> like Sorry, it's did they uh, <laughs> did they make his ulti not hit BKB too? No, it does. It's still uh, BKB. No, it's not. A, I it's, think it's true. It still hits BKB. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I before it was just. It was just so silly, like, you go to gang ma mag in mid, and then the skewers you to your, his own tower, and you die, yeah, and you're like, yeah, good, good, good game, like, level one, or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was such far range, 1200. Yeah. So, I, I think it's going to be a uh, first pick still, though, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The, 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 the difference is that you, you can't really offline him anymore. The skewer range makes him... Quite weak, in my opinion, but it's. I think you can still offlane him. Because, yeah, but like, the problem is that if you. Heroes. Yeah, but if you get zero EXP in a lane like that, like before, you could go wherever you want and He's like. He's not kill really a good man up hero either. Either he's not like Beastmaster, where you just man up under support and force EXP yeah. or something. You His animation is too slow, okay, no. yeah. He's not the high. I think it's three base armor. I'm not sure, but it's not anything particularly special. Uh. Um, I still think it'll be first pick or material too, just because RP is so good late game. Like if yeah, you get RP that refresher, plus. you just win. I don't yeah. know. That's how I feel a lot of games. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> it's actually. And so then good. empower is such a good skill to like yeah. back up a carry on your own. I'm teams. I'm so glad that they uh, changed empower to not work with BKB really though, because oh, in Dota yeah. one it didn't yeah. do it, and then Dota two I thought it did in it. But then yeah. uh, we we played a game against a Void where he BKB'd with empower on and it just killed us all. And we're like, wow. So. <laughs> And having issues with power. that. And power is like so good for coming back too. It is. It's ridiculous for farming. Like, uh, I actually sort of like that though, because you can make like a hero like CK actually have farming potential. Whereas before CK is sort of, you have to kill them or you're not really going to farm for late game. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it makes a lot of carry heroes uh, viable, actually. Like melee. Yeah. You can pretty much pr play anything and then you can still stack and farm and push out lanes. So deal damage. Okay, Sam. The hero that I wanted to bring up, the one that you said wouldn't change at all, but then you said it was shit, he finally got a bit of a buff. Um, Morphling's cast animation time was decreased from 0.4 to uh, a quarter of a second. Do you feel like that? <laughs> that's going to be kind of something that pushes him back into Liquid being uh, picking him for Korok again? Or do you feel like oh, yeah. the hero's just like way too bad now? 
I asked Quark about it, and he's like, no, no way. It's like, he still needs the... The problem is his laning, you can't really put him mid anymore, and then the whole regen thing, he like runs out of mana so fast. So you're like forced to go the Lincoln's route. Uh, I don't I know. Really hate, I, I really never understood like why they had to change the mana cost so insanely. Yeah. Like It just makes the hero in stupid. Like you, the, as, as you said, you need to go for the Lincoln's, otherwise you, you won't have mana enough to even survive in gauges. Yeah. And then the, you can't e-blade. Uh, you can't use the e-blade efficiently. Like if you wave it in an e-blade, you have to. You you like you're gonna get stunned. But before you could like, you could kill someone even before this fight yeah. started. And that's why he was such a, yeah. such a strong hero. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you're gonna say something. Way of trying to nudge him into the competitive scene or ma make people try and test him. He always changes like these little things. If you notice in the change logs, he'll like change a tiny bit, and then like maybe the hero will see a bit of play, but. That's what I think. Ice Frog's like, hey, like, it's a bit of a change. Morphling is still good, right? He's trying it's to actually, uh, It's actually a really great way to balance stuff, though, I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like the fact that you make uh, the weak heroes better, slowly, slow by slow, and then, um, like, you don't really nerf the heroes you have already if they're not ex insanely balanced like Mag or something like that, but still, you like, instead of uh, balancing the game by nerfing everything that works out, they, instead they kind of buff what doesn't really work. But I mean, I still, as, as you guys talked about in the beginning of the show, I, I think that, there's, that there are so many different heroes that are still viable, like Weaver, I think Ricky can easily work, uh, and there's a lot of heroes like Wisp and Mag and stuff like that that makes other heroes work uh, in games they earlier wouldn't, so... I think like if you if you would look at the change patch, I would look at Spectre. I think the Spectre can be good now. Uh, like honestly, the the old change does a lot. Like like back in the day when they changed Spectre ult, uh, to like once you jumped to a rep, to a illusion, the Spectre ult would stop haunting. Um, it's like that change has done a lot, and like now you can go desolate plus more of a fighting Spectre build, and I think it could easily work out playing, being played. I think Diffusal Rush could be really strong with her now. Yeah, that's what I mean, like you can run something like Tranquil, maybe some early early stats items, PMS, whatever, and then you go for Diffusal. Yeah, uh, Vitus or whatever. And then you can just fight quite early, like it does a fuckload of damage, the Desolate, so... She does, Desolate's actually ridiculous how much it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, and Sam, I'm going to hammer you again, and you're going to hate me, but Templar Assassin just recently got nerfed, right? So her refraction mana cost got increased from 75 to 100. Knowing that change, do you think you could be Ferrari now with your invoker? Dude, whatever, man. <laughs> the, hero, the hero is still stupid, but it helps a lot, actually, because it, it removes her bottle crowing. The whole reason was, like, you get one rune, and then you get, like, what, 10... 10 more refracts or something? I don't know. But exponential, I think TA is a hero right now that like needs a lot of farm to do more. It's just people know how to play. So people know pe people learn how to play versus it. Like regardless of how well she does in the lane, you can have these team fight heroes that just do better versus her. So she needs a snowball, I think, if she doesn't do well. Or sorry, she needs I don't, a snowball. I don't really agree. Like I, I think you just need to slowly farm with TA and then you get like a fucking Daedalus or something. Then you can just one shot the uh, semi carry in the late game. The, I think the hero is still quite stupid, to be honest. Yeah. Like if if it actually wins the mid phase. Well, I, mean, I like I like how that mid as well. it's not totally like Im imbalanced, like straight up imbalanced hero, but this small little nerf, so it doesn't make her totally like yeah. unlegit. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Josh, uh, looking at the heroes in general, though. Do you feel like there's anybody we missed that could potentially kind of hit the meta uh, meta game with the changes that happened? I know Doom also got a buff, right? Necrolite did too, but it was. Oh, kind yeah, of yeah, Doom yeah, got yeah. a huge buff. Yo, Doom huge. is so good. Oh my right, Josh, god, that's why is Doom right now? <laughs> because he has armor. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, it's plus one. Did, you, did you read it? One. It said too much armor. Like, how good that's, is that? Dude, uh, it's not even that. It's like. One armor is actually like exponentially good. I, I think. <laughs> what I think. No, I'm being honest, dude. The hero is like. Yeah, it actually is important to be honest. Yeah, one, but, 
going from zero to one is a lot. Like I'm not even kidding. I I love Doom right now. I love uh, Rod of Angels on him. He's so fun. Uh, I don't know I if I can one. play him competitively, but in pubs, oh. he's so fun. Oh my god, I don't think I can have any respect for a person that loves Doom. Here was so so and then you ate so sad. Like, oh my god, ever since they made the change where you can eat the uh, creep from level one, I mean, there's so many pubs you just have this idiot going woods level one. Oh, that's one. Just, that's my favorite. He dude. just I love stays that. in woods, and you're like, oh my god, please. Yeah, and you uh, you farm now. you farm five items off the jungle. <laughs> yeah, I know, but isn't that good? So, uh, it's I, the new Furion, pretty much. Yeah, it's the new Furion. Yeah. Pubs oh are safe. No, but, no, no, guys, guys, seriously, <laughs> try uh, Doom, and then you get a rod of Atos, and you Doom someone, and you Atos them, and they just die. Like sixty percent slow, silence, can't do anything. So good. Rod of Atos. Everyone heard it here first. Yeah. Um, yeah. Touched that item like ever since it was released in the history of Dota, it's, but it's actually quite strong now. They buffed it a lot. Yeah, is it the HP buff or? Yeah, it's 325 HP, I think 25 in, and the 60% slow is really good, though, but it's low CD, too. I mean, I mean the, the, it's obviously good, it's just that, like... It's so hard to find stuff to get it. Yeah. <laughs> they're, be they're, better <laughs> items to buy. they're better items to buy with it's that. It's like, player, like, when should I buy a Road of Athos? Like, hmm... It's <laughs> so fun, because it's instant, it's so fun. I don't know, I love that item, it's just fun. I, I actually felt that if they would buff Road of Athos, so it goes through BKB... I think oh that God. it would be. Oh, uh, I, I don't want that because you could never play a melee carry again. No, it's you, pretty much a defusal that goes through. Then you can just go Lincoln's. Oh, Lincoln's BKB. No, but that <laughs> means you don't have to go to BKB. I mean, BKB is so crucial right now. It feels like Dota 2 BKB is like. Ah, uh, everyone gets BKB and then you win pretty much. So I feel yeah. that if, if. And I think that World of Autos is still quite useless, so if you did. Buff it with something like some insane way like that. <laughs> At least it would be used in competitive games. Uh, you just wait. I Next actually agree. Like, I think he needs something <laughs> like that. Cause yeah. There's like no item. Like you, you, how much is it? Like close to three or 31. something? But it's three. Yeah, thirty-one. But there's like better items to buy. I mean, what what role is gonna? I think a few heroes can get it though. Like OD. I like I like it on yeah. OD. And that's yeah. pretty much the only hero I can think of. You ever of get the... Arm on Vassal, It's just pretty good. Yeah, it sounds quite. But the same is way. it better than a mech? Is it better than a pipe? It's really good after mech, honestly. Like, it's I don't I think you guys are underrating it because it never gets used. What is do you think about force? Uh, about, the draw? about the draw? What do you think about the draw change? Uh, she still does so much God, damage. She's so painful. Yeah, she's still painful. Yeah, but I mean, not now you can't do the like visage agonim. Well, draw it's still that. Oh, that yeah. was hilarious. <laughs> that was, like, <laughs> that was so, so funny. <laughs> You just instant kill a carry player. <laughs> it like wasn't even like, like you could instant kill like a, a tower. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just died. Yeah, it's quite silly. <coughs> but is it viable? Drow Ranger, competitive play. I think I, so. I right? think she is. Yeah. Yeah, she was like first picked in the SMM games in band. So it's a Dota one. Dota one. I mean, like just if you have a Drow Ranger and you have an Enigma pushing a tower together. Like, they take that tower in two seconds. Yeah. They do, they do. You know, I actually miss a, miss a hero like Bristleback. I mean, I heard I picked I miss Bristleback. Oh, I SM, heard so uh, got picked. Yeah, yeah, they got hero. picked SM finals or something? To counter bot. Undying. To counter undying, yeah. yeah. And I just missed him. I want to play Bristle, run around and tank everything. Which I... <laughs> he was so fun. Yeah. Uh, I like uh, the subtle Dazzle Shallow Grave cast range buff as well. Because, like, yeah. 400 at level 1. Like, it seemed like you could never hit that if you played yeah. Dazzle. That's very true. It's also really nice in that you really need points in your other skills as Dazzle in order to be effective, but you couldn't because you needed to sort of get Shallow Grave up. Yeah. yeah like, I, mean, I would always try to keep level 1 Shallow Grave. Because you needed level 3 Poison Touch. To probably stuff. hated you. Yeah. Well, well you need level 3 <laughs> At least you can cast out yourself. <laughs> I'm really greedy about using Grave only for myself, so the cast change actually has no impact on me at all as a player. So, Alright, so if I had to put you guys on the spot, um, Josh, if I had to ask what hero do you think with these changes would stop seeing play and one hero that would start seeing play again, what would it be for you? Um, well, I think... Uh, I don't know. I think Dazzle's already usable, but I think Lycan is the hero that might see play. We haven't talked about him. 
but he got two in increase, which isn't much, but the Wolves also got their yeah. armor increased by one. And I yeah, think Lycan was already on the state of usable. It's just finding out how to use him and using him... This is a little bit too weak in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And using him in situations where, like, you could, like, as a fifth pick, like, jungle when you know they aren't aggressive tri-laning or they don't have aggressive tri-laning heroes, uh, I, th I think he can... I think he has a place still, but it's very hard to run him and people have to test it. So... Okay. Like, uh, I I agree. It's it's one of those things again that Icefrog bad. Like he first he nerfs nerfs uh, Lycan like quite severely, but then quickly he realizes that there was too too much of a nerf. So slow slowly he tries to make the hero uh, like good enough to be picked again. And I think it's the right way to go. Like doing these small changes like armor does so much for his wolves. I think it will do a lot. Alright, Loda, if I had to put you on the spot, one hero that you think would enter the competitive play with these changes and one hero that'll exit. I said it's Spectre. It's gonna enter, obviously. We're gonna uh, see some Spectre NTH. Yeah, we will, obviously. Yeah. One hundred percent. I will make it and we pick it. Uh and then get get out of it. Uh I don't know. Did anyone really get that nerfed that they will I think uh, Sven's greater cleave was reduced by a bit, and his war cry duration was yeah, but by still one. like, like still that's it. but the thing is that <laughs> what people don't really understand is that Sven wasn't that bad to begin with. Like he wasn't was yeah. the thing was that once they buffed the god strength uh, some time ago when he went from once uh, I don't know what it was what, the exact numbers, but the, he was the hero was still strong, and we just spoke about it. I mean, I I was the one. Uh, mentioning mentioning it right away when we made NTH that Sven is extremely strong and a lot of people feel that he was broken during the remake and so so on and sure Sven is he's a bit silly like when you have the combinations especially like when you have Sven plus uh, Darkseer and Sven plus Mag and stuff like that then the hero is just stupid with a like crit vacuum or crit uh, uh, Mag ult but I mean still the hero is the hero, is, the hero is still very good, and I think it can be used. I don't, but I don't think it's broken. I really don't. There are ways to counter it. So I think it's crit, still gonna be. Crit also got a nerf too. Yeah, didn't yeah. it? The item itself. It went from uh, crit multiplier decrease from two point seven to two point four, and that the was, recipe cost got reduced though. That was really Too necessary hard. though, because crit was way too good compared to something like NKB. Yeah. The DPS was just. Like, you could get two crits instead of MKB and be better yeah. off for DPS. Yeah, in MKB... Cases. I still almost feel MKB needs some kind of buff. Like, there's no real reason going MKB if someone isn't going Butterfly. And even then, like, on heroes like Sven, it's obviously never going to be worth going MKB because this splash is going to hit them anyways. Okay. Sam, yeah. do you feel... Uh, I'd have to ask you, what do you think the hero that'll, like start seeing competitive play is and now like somebody that hasn't exactly seen play before. I hate the hero but it's Omni Knight with a purification oh. buff. It's like annoying. You can even see like support Omni Knights and shit. I actually think that hero is really over uh, overpowered but people just don't want to use it. I agree it's always actually. Been. I've always been I saying hate that hero. Omni is overpowered like the hero is just insane. Yeah it gives you a free yeah. BKB to your carry right? He's, yeah, I hate him. Yeah, it's not, it's not even the repel. That's just a good spell. But I mean, the heal is insane early game, and like it does so much more than you think. The damage is insane. The ult is insane. Like every skill is quite insane. <laughs> 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 All right, Kurt, a hero that you think will uh, kind of enter the competitive metagame in the coming uh, change. Uh, I don't know if Clockwork counts, but he got a decent. He doesn't. Buffer, he really doesn't. Doesn't. <laughs> Try again. Oh, well, this is awkward now, huh? <laughs> really why, does it, why does Clockwork not count? <laughs> because he's picked in China a lot, isn't he? Like, that's not kind of one of their standard he's... heroes. Oh. Is it really a standard hero? Well, it's... I know LGD in anyways. It's not a standard hero. Well, it's, it's like, we're talking twice. about the entire scene, though. Like, if, uh, right now, I'm just like... Alright, fine. Semantics. Well. Kurt, Thank you. let's yeah. talk about Clockwork. Can, like, Fanatic pick Spectre once or something? That shouldn't count either. Stupid. <laughs> Really? Uh, 
I don't know. Float <laughs> is a bandit, Kurt. <laughs> nah, that was so uh, No, no, clockwork. Like, the Agi is actually pretty nice for yeah. armor because mid late game, he has no armor right now. And uh, I actually think the nerfs and buffs were done really well this patch. I don't think it really moved anyone out of viability. So you agree with uh, most of these changes? Like the kind of subtle pushes and pulls and everything? Um, yeah, mostly. I'm sort of... Uh, oh, something... He won't be moved out of like being pickable, but I think Undying, he, his bug on Decay got fixed, which is really big. And then he also had a bug on Tombstone fix, which is also big. And oh, his Decay... Bug on both. What bug? Can you explain? Uh, decay healed for way, way too much. Like The Tombstone one? And Tombstone, they were... Always bloodlust. <laughs> yeah, yeah actually pretty uh, big. That was gigantic. Like, um, when remember, did that decay get changed? Uh, oh, wait. Decay with dispatch. Decay uh, just got fixed. No, no, I'm talking about the tombstone one. I don't, I don't know. No, it wasn't all the time, but it was like mo way more than it should have been. I can't uh -huh. remember the exact number. I just remember reading about it. But the decay is huge because in Dota one, you couldn't really heal to a hundred percent. And in Dota 2, you can. So that got fixed. The tombstone, like zombies, they're supposed to be crawling around on the ground and yeah, like, running when they're blood the with those zombies. I, I think they were always, like, running around. And I think they're supposed to be, like, crawling. I don't know. One form of them was running around, one form was crawling. <laughs> you guys okay. understand what I'm saying? No, not even a little bit. Like, the animation, like, the yeah. zombies. I think they I remember. Were, oh, okay. Okay. Like at some point, w the zombies were like crawling, like half body crawling on, on the ground, and then when they got bloodlusted, I think they grew legs and started running into heroes, and that's how you can tell they were bloodlusted. But mm, does, okay. doesn't it feel like sometimes there, there's just so many zombies spawning? Like you're in a fight for like such a short while, and you have like five zombies on you following you. Was that what you meant that the zombies no, spawn too uh, much, or do you mean yeah, that yeah. only the rage? It was a different animation for bloodlust, for the bloodlusted zombies against the non-bloodlusted zombies. So that that was broken or what? Oh my god! Yeah, they looked like they're sure they looked like they're crawling, but they're walking. <laughs> well, they were always bloodlusted. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I hate undying enemies. Fucking yeah, seriously. Ugly hero. <laughs> All right, so something that was brought up on Reddit, actually, that I wanted to talk about that had some implications on the game. Uh, credit goes to Lockified. There was a thread about Rubik being able to jungle. Did anybody see that? You were able to... Uh, you go behind the large camp on the, uh, the Radiant side, on the left, you know, by the T1 tower in mid. T2. Oh, yeah. T2 tower. Yeah, mid. T2. Yeah, and what you would do is you would lift the creep over and then bring it to the bottom lane. And then the creeps, when they were passing by, would attack it, uh, and then their well, AI would blow the path. No, it's it's really yeah, fast levels. Course. Yeah, I know. We we knew that even at Dreamhack, yeah. we were considering using it, but we just didn't end up using it. So that that shit's broken. But it is, yeah, it is quite broken. Actually. They aggressive try lane to stop your mid pull, and then you do that shit, and what are they gonna do? Like they yeah. just lose. Do you think yeah, that I needs? Do you, do you think like the entire uh, way that like the the uh, neutral system works has to be changed, Kurt, for that to be fixed, or what? Um, Cause like, I know I'm that okay. they already had a substantial nerf, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with some map imbalances on sides, like Dire Side, Roshan, Radiant sort of has, in my opinion, better lanes, but I think this one is yeah. a bit silly. Like, it's... Yeah, I agree. It's too much, you know? Like, it's yeah. not something that's really counterable, and, like, Roshan, you can play around it, Lanes, you can sort of like play for it. Do you, you can't prepare for this. Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I agree. I'm a, I'm a bit tired of these like abuse, abuse spells to pull the most random. I mean, you saw us when we used the Vino, Vino thing yeah. at Dreamhack when you like pull ancients and stack, stack them, eggs. and then EG used it against us, and we were like, what? <laughs> this is really <laughs> broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so stupid, and I think all all. Like I, I like the fact that you said like some imbalances and that you can pull at certain places. I don't think you should nerf the pulling too much, but things like that is just. I think it ruins the game in some ways when it's very hard to counter. Like you have to pull a ward there every game or. And to ward, I don't know. 
Sam, do you uh, do you feel like the whole pulling mechanic has to be changed, or do you think it'll kind of just go like the Earthshaker? You can't block the Fissure thing where it's outlawed. What what pulling mechanic though? Like okay, so the what ends up happening? War thing is completely. No, no, broken. I know, I know the pulling mechanic, but they can just hot fix that by making the creep go around the other way instead of that down there. Like yeah, it's just that simple. Works. That's all yeah. I have to do. It's like uh, the, 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 right now, I think it's fine. It's you have to. It's harder to pull mid and harder to pull like top dire and stuff. So yeah, I actually really I like, like that it now. Point. Yeah, that's actually a good so. change, Sam. I mean, you are Ice Frog. You you did invent that strategy, so. Well, I I knew about this like. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so why no, did, did you ever pop, bring dude. it up? No, I I know a lot of things like tiny jungling. Like I invented that like. Oh my god. Beginning of baby. Oh, okay, let me tell you tiny jungling. We had a dilated oh, mind. Dilated Mind was ringing for us as Tiny, and 20 minutes in, he was level 5 with, like, boots. That's because he doesn't know how to do it, bro. <laughs> and, yeah. Fix it. But so that's, that's my thoughts, right? No, I mean, sure, honest, you may have invented that, but I never even heard about you playing that, so <laughs> it wasn't so successful, or... Whatever, Loda, you didn't control <laughs> No, but it's good. You can hook. You can pull mid as dire with Pudge as well. You just hook the creep down and you pull. It's quite effective. Oh, that, cool. that's actually pretty neat. I know. I just throw out the, all these secret strategies that no one knows and now we'll change <laughs> the metagame. Like, uh, punch ganking <laughs> TA. Punch jungle ganking TA is hilarious, too. Yeah. <laughs> so what, wow. are you, uh, what were you going to say, though, Sam, regarding the pulling? What? It's didn't, just didn't change these little things. They don't need to change everything. Like everything, I think it's fine right now pulling. It's not too much. You don't see those mid mid pulls as much, and you can people know how to play versus them. I think yeah. more than itself, people just weren't thinking of how to play versus it. Like it was happening, and I think everyone was at fault. Like you see this one team just doing this play style, and then the other team's not trying to put anything or stop them from doing it. So inherently, at least they fixed it. But right now, I think it's the point where they don't have to change anything too much about the pulling. So that's my opinion. By the way, Sam, uh, before we end the show, somebody wanted me to mention your ravages today against Fnatic EU. That that was like important for me to mention. Apparently, I'm was sorry. It bad? I don't remember. I think it was somebody from NA Dota. Oh, it was bad. They won the series, so it doesn't matter, right? That's all that matters. Dude, it doesn't matter, bro. Like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that hero, that hero is bad. I'm just gonna put on the hero. <laughs> yeah, ravage really is the hardest spell to hit, so. Yeah. I mean, Dude, she they, 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 but like, there's always these players, right? That they, they miss the whole ravage. Like, like they don't even hit anyone, and you're like, is that even possible? Like every time I play tide, yeah. I just run. Like click. No, Ooh, no, so, you don't understand. Sometimes it's hard to run next to them and hit R. Yeah, it's very hard, right? It's it like, is, where, where am I? Okay, Sam, I understand I you. This way or this way? Yeah, dude, it's, it's like. Well, I, I, dude, I don't even know what. Ra I think I hit one ravage on a West CK that was about to TP out. That was it. Damn. <laughs> Dota by Bulba, but anyways, I think that'll wrap up our show today, guys. Um, thank you for following us all. Loda, your Twitter is at Lodaberg, L-O-D-A-B-E-R-G, for people that are watching on um, the uh, through the podcast. Any shout-outs or any, uh, anything you want to plug personally? Uh, Shout-out to uh, Matrim, Nikwa... E e EGM, pretty much all the Swedish in-house players. That they, we play a lot of pubs together, and they have been whining at me for like weeks that I would. No, I mean in one week. I mean since they know I would be on this show, I've been begging for shoutouts. So, all of you watching the show, you understand that they they really deserve this. Uh, <laughs> and and then a shout out to my girlfriend. That's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, Bulba, you're now Liquid Bulba. Is there, I obviously want to plug your team. Anything you want to give a plug or a shout-out to? Um, shout-out to my team and its sponsors, Razor, Twitch, Shiny Things. Uh, shout-out to Matrum and <laughs> Charlie and my girlfriend, Angina. <laughs> <laughs> and Whipboss, sorry. <laughs> Okay. All right, Josh. Uh, at Paint Dota is where you can follow him on Twitter. For anybody, uh, Josh, is there anything you want to plug or give a shout out to? Uh, I'd like to shout out to uh, to Mayshrim and because uh, he asked for one. And oh universe. God. And I'd like to shout out Korok as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sweet deal. All right. 
And uh, I always save you for last, Kurt, so you can show off your sweatshirt and everything. You can follow him at AUI underscore 2002 and three zeros. Is there anything you want to shout out or plug? Uh, he seems very popular, so I'd like to know him. So I'd like to shout out to Matron. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank my team, Team Dignitas, and our three main sponsors, Alienware, Antec, and Intel, as well as the other ones. And uh, Oh, also, I'm building a new computer really soon, so follow me on Twitch so I can stream and stuff. Is it just twitch.tv uh, oh, slash AUI yes. underscore 2000? Yeah, twitch.tv slash AUI underscore 2000. All right, you guys can follow me at blitz underscore dota uh, and twitch.tv forward slash blitz dota. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to watch the final match of uh, the Premier League tomorrow. That's Empire versus Fnatic EU. Also on neodota.com, there's a new article series released called Five Mid where you'll probably hear like the most honest pro opinions ever about stuff. And also follow neodota2 on Twitter, uh, on YouTube as well. It's just youtube.com forward slash neodota2. And a uh, personal shout-out to Cam and, I guess, Hilo and everybody that follows my stream. Thank you so I'm much, by the way, for being on the stream. I'm a matron. Yeah, I, I you brought me to give a shout-out to Hilo. But, uh, yeah, and we, play, we play Dignitas tomorrow, so shout-out to uh, watch that game. Oh, really? That's the three, I think. Good luck. Yeah. I hate that team. AUI? AUI? I mean, you have that any comments? Oh. Pre-game way, comments, Kurt? Hey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 I'll bet. Let's do some bets, guys. Bring yeah, right. comments, Kurt. What are the so, odds you're taking them? Also, uh, we'll be skipping the viewer in-house as people are relatively busy today. Sorry about that, guys. And no, no, Drasko, can we blame Drasko? He can't cast. So yeah, Drasko has his flight in like a day, so it'll ruin his sleep schedule too much. And also, I don't think uh, we're going to host MAD this upcoming Monday because it's Christmas Eve, but we'll post details on the next show. It'll be... Probably a European one, actually, on some random day. Probably a Wednesday or something. So thank you all so much for following. Have a nice night. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Well, yeah, now I remember what Thanks happened. To me. There was, like, a glare on my screen and, like, hit there. Oh, and my God. Like, oh, so then I accidentally pressed V. Now I remember, dude. Okay. So shout it's out to okay. the glare. We understand. Ravage is hard. Thank you. <laughs> there was just a glare. <laughs> okay, that's great. Is it over? Well, did you even thank did you even thank me for being on the show? I did. Like I don't really feel appreciated enough, but okay. Hey, I told you I'd give you an eye. Oh yeah, what what about that? Oh I said I'd give you an eye.